Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The age women likewise, that they be behavior that be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. All right, Paul is writing to a pastor of a church. He's laying down standards for the ministry as he does to Timothy. And he speaks about aged men, verse 2. He talks about the aged women, verse 3. And we're going to look at these women for a moment because this gets us into our story, study on our daughters. That as fathers, we're not to be alone. And I don't see this teaching in the churches today. Maybe it's going on, but I have not seen it in all the churches I've been in. Old women, the older women are to be holiness, becoming holiness, godlike, Christ-like, not false accusers, not blaming, not lying, not giving them much wine. You can drink a little wine, but not much wine. Teachers of good things, all right, teachers. But see, they can be Sunday school teachers. They're to be teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. All right, these women are to be holy. They're not to be liars. They're not to be gospels, gospel, gossip. They're to be teachers of good things. That is what our daughters are to learn as they grow old. But right now, the older women are to impart to the younger women their experience and this ought to be in every church this is Bible and this is not found in the church the women that are in a church are supposed to take the young women under their their wings under their arms and help the parents raise these daughters to be like them in holiness not false security wait a minute the churches are just filled with gossip nursery women's clubs i've heard about them i got the reports about them that's not what they're supposed to be and when they bring their daughters and young ones that's what they're teaching them and that's a violation of scripture There were in the old days, the grandparents would, would be helping the parents teach the children. That they may teach the young women to be sober. That is serious. That's not, you know, sober as intoxicated. No, this is serious. It's end childhood foolishness. Put away the toys. Grow up. That's what it is. It's not encouraging child play. To love their husbands. And older women need to just demonstrate this to the young bride or the virgin to love their husband. They are to be examples. Again, just as much as a husband to his wife, a wife to her husband, there are poor examples. You know, I, I've seen, I got right now, I got one woman in mine at a church I was at. And they mentioned, about, you know, you're going to go home make your, your husband lunch. <laughs> I wouldn't make him no lunch. And who's around listening listening to you and watching you maybe a young woman who's now just picked up your anti-bible attitude they need to be trained the women need to be trained husbands were told to love their wives these women are to teach their their young ladies to love their husbands that's something that needs to be taught That young lady is going to enter into a marriage with a man. She's going to be in great surprises on what that man is going to be and what he's going to do. Prince Charming will turn into a slob real quick. He's unlovable at times, numerous times. And those elder ladies should be with experience of being married. She just teach those women. You know, you just got to count the five you just 
You got to help that young lady. You got to encourage her to grow. As I mentioned before, there are certain things for your daughters that she's got certain issues that us men will never understand and we're not to understand. And if you're a widow and you don't have a, a wife to help her, these are the people you're supposed to turn to. I've only seen one woman of all the churches I gather all the girls together and help them with their lesson on their womanhood. Only one. They're also not only to love their husbands, not to talk about them, not to despise them, to love their children. Children are not like television families that girls grow up with today. You know, on a television program, you're watching the program, the kid, you know, he burns down the, 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 the laundry room. And tomorrow's episode, the laundry room's back. No, that's, that's not reality. You know, the child just loves all your cooking, everything. That's not reality. She has an issue with the husband. And she'll have issue with the children. And she needs to know how to deal with them. How to... These beasts that I'm living with. What do I need to do? She, According to the Bible, she's going to need help from these women. And it's not just, all right, it's a Sunday morning, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock kind of thing. She's going to need someone that she can turn to during the week. Even if it's like, hi, uh, you know, my husband, my children really like that, that thing that you made at the fellowship dinner. Can you give me the recipe and help, and help me through it? I gotta go run somewhere real important. I got my children. Can you help me with my children? Can you help me and teach me how to sew? Can you help me? The women are supposed to help each other. We're supposed to be a family. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's what Paul's writing to Titus about. The older mother, the grandmother, needs to take a young woman under the young mother under her wings and support her and help her to grow. Help her grow in the Lord. To be discreet. Chase keepers at home, good. Oh, there's that one from the virtuous woman. Obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now notice what that they may teach the young women, the elder women, teach them to be sober, to be serious, to love their husbands. That's got to be taught. To love their children. That's got to be taught. Discreet is prudence. Wise in avoiding errors or evil. And selecting the best means to accomplish a purpose. And that's the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. That young woman needs to be taught discretion. If you go to this store and buy this product, you're just wasting your money. You go over there and you get this size. The name brand of this one is it's just the same as the store brand of this one. Yes, this name brand, it, it, it does what it's supposed to. They're supposed to help young women avoid errors and avoid evil. And we saw that with the virtuous woman. She used to do good and not evil, if I remember correctly. A younger woman has no experience of what the elder woman has. And the experience is a great tutor of us all. That aged woman is supposed to take her age and use it to help someone grow to age. But we are in a church age that we think of other people for the people. It's all, about, it's all for me. It's all selfishness. Chase. A woman needs to be taught how to be chased. Pure from all unlawful commerce of sexes. Applied to persons before marriage, it signifies pure from all sexual commerce, undefiled, applied to a married person, true to the marriage bed. That is Webster's 1828 Dictionary under Chase. You want to put that one in the schoolroom today? Where they're handing out condos and handing out uh, the, whatever that woman for sexual thing, 
prevent pregnancy? You want to hand that out to as a woman is brought to Planned Parenthood in an elementary school, in a middle school? Those women are supposed to teach young ladies, keep it to your marriage bed. What, what do you need to keep? Your virginity. Those women are to remind that young lady, keep your virgin, virginity to your husband. You're dating that man? Oh, that's very fine. I hope he's got your hands off you. That's your rule of your father, isn't it? Keep your hands off you? He better have him keep his hands off you or he's going to have to deal with me. How come the women ain't helping the fathers? How come the women ain't helping the mothers? There ought to be no teenage pregnancies out of wedlock in a Bible, <coughs> Bible Titus chapter 2 church with the word chase. That word chase is also a reference to the bride of Christ. Yet how often does she sleep with Satan in the world? It must be shown by the women that the sexual desire, the questions, and the answer to the young ladies. See, you weren't supposed to bring this to your husband. You're supposed to bring it to a woman. That young ladies need to be need to be told what to do with an imagination from her husband's desire. And about her own imagination. Because God will judge our imaginations. Sexual education to be a lady. Proper sex with your husband. To be in character. That's not being taught. So the public schools will teach condoms, homosexuality, and now transgender. Why? Because you age women of the churches have failed. Look at your girls in your church today and tell me how much different are they from the world. And then you look at yourself, you go up in your prayer closet, you get down on your knees in tears, you tell God, I failed my church. My Bible believing church, I failed it because I can't apply Titus 2 and I don't even hear Titus 2 being taught in the churches. Keepers at home, your husband's home and no one else's. Those women are teach you to how to take care of your husband's house. How to work a sewing machine. How to do a vacuum. How to, if the blind falls, how to make meals. And to keep you inside in that house where you belong in no one else's house. Good. Did you know good needs to be taught? That the virtuous woman over and over, as I've already said, when a man says he has a good wife, ladies, he has said a biblical much about you. Because when he says, I got a good wife, that is biblical. We've seen it over and over about the wife. Obedient to their husbands. We saw that in Ephesians. Paul said, wives submit. How do they know if no one teaches them? Isn't that what Paul says in Romans 10 about somebody about the gospel and about salvation? How would they know except the preacher be sent? How are they going to know about how to be saved? What God, God, and Paul says to God, I got, he's got to send a preacher. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, how are these women? Here, all right, I do. Boom, you're in a marriage. What do I do? Yeah, yeah, what do I, I don't know. What, that, that day before that woman says I do, she already been, should have been prepared. By the church. Right there. Paul is speaking to Christians. He's not speaking to lost people. He says, Titus, you speak to the aged men. Titus, you speak to the aged women. And this is what they're supposed to do. You think you're supposed to hand out at the casino and spend your whole life at the casino with all the, the retirement money? You're a fool. You're supposed to be training people in that church. You're not done. 
There is no retirement from from serving God as a born again Bible believing Christian. You keep going to the death. That's what Paul's saying. Keep them going. Keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you pure because you know what? You got to watch your life because these young ladies are watching your life. Liberals may teach young women that they have rights. And obedience to men will be against a woman's will. That's Satan's teaching. Satan's teaching the public school and the now or National Organization for Women should be anti taught to girls from Christian young ladies saying that what the world's teaching is wrong. This is what you're supposed to be. And as a Christian, you're supposed to stand out like a thorn in the world. Good old wise advice from an experienced wife to a young bride, to a young lady. Her own husband, no one else's. We already spoke about that. So you see how Titus is backing up 1 Corinthians 7. It's backing up Proverbs 31. It's backing up Ephesians. It's backing up Colossians. They all go together. So if there's any conflict of what we're studying, you got a conflict with the Bible. Now, if the wife does not adhere to what the Bible's taught, if the elder lady does not teach the younger women, look what it says. Well, let's, let's first let's read the age women, verse three. Likewise, that they be in good behavior is becoming holiness, not fault to cure, not given to much wine. Teachers of good things. That's what they're supposed to be. Their character that they may teach what God expects to them. The young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemy. If those women do not teach those young ladies what to do, the Bible is blasphemy. You've taken this section of the Bible and just thrown it out. Oh, we're King James 1611. No modern Bible for us. But you got the scissors out and you cut out Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. You cut that out. And when you cut that out, now you got a young lady who gets married. She doesn't know how to behave. She doesn't know how to be holy. Now, as a wife in a church, now she's blaspheming the word of God because she has no idea what she's supposed to do. She has no idea what the conduct of the Bible is for her as a wife. It's a blasphemy to the word of God. You upset the word of God by rebelling as a wife. And Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 7, Hey, you may be saved. You may have a lost spouse. Now try to win that lost spouse to the Lord when you're in rebellion. He'll see right through you. If a Christian woman do not teach your younger church Christian ladies, the world and Satan will be very happy to teach them. Look around. There are people out there who, who are completely in belief and following the fact that, well, I don't know what sex I am. Where did that come from? That came from the worldly teaching. There's a teaching out there, you know, I, I doesn't care before I get married, sexual encounter, anything like that. And if anything happens, you know, that fetus is unwanted, just, just let the, the teacher take me to the doctors and we'll just get rid of it and all that. No shame. That's what's being taught in the world. No churches are teaching it. And that's one of the dangers. We're looking at next the dangers of marriage so we don't come back here. The danger, one danger of marriage is the word of God being blasphemed. You can carry a King James 1611 Bible under your arm and be blasting the word of God. 1 Peter 3.7 I won't want to be charged with blasphemy. And by the way, Jesus Christ is the Word. So you're blaspheming Him. 1 Peter 3 7.
Paul wrote to Titus and these women, you know, the parents need help. And they need help more so today with the world just being wicked. First Peter 3 7. Likewise, ye husbands, oh, talking to husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Dwell with who? Your wife. Knowledge. You're supposed to have knowledge about that woman. Giving honor unto the wife. Hey, this is my wife. No more honor father and mother. That's out the window. We've already seen that with the with the with the girl. When she marries her husband, the honor goes to the marriage bed. The parents are gone. Give that honor that you gave your parents, and more so, give it to your wife, who's you. Unto the weaker vessel. She's emotional. She got things with her body that the Bible says she's... Now, according to Proverbs 31, this is not, oh, I can't lift things. Wow, that woman is strong. And getting stronger, we read. Sometimes she's just going you're just gonna be sitting there, she's gonna break out in tears. Uh -oh. And she can't do as much as you can do, man. All right, you, you can build a, 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 a hole all the way around the yard. Don't expect her that she can do that. She'll fill it and plant flowers in that. That's her job. And as being hairs together, well, look at that. Your rewards is her rewards. Her rewards is your rewards. Of the grace of life. Look at that. Now this is the warning. That your prayers be not hindered. Husband and wife dwell together. Don't depart. Stay together. Be one. Serve the Lord together. Uh, you know, whatever your ministry you have, if she's not feeling well, get her what she needs, let her rest. If she allows you to go, do. She's going to get the equal blessing. Take care of her. Help her. No outside marriage affairs, and I mean no adultery. There is no place. There is no her place and no his place. It's your place, their place. This is my house. No, it's not. It's both of your houses. This is my room. No, it's both of yours room. That's her car. That's my car. No, they're both your cars. Give honor to the wife. Not to the parents, the children, the ball team, the bowling night, the prayer group. Paul already told us of this. Peter's now backing up Paul. And it, if that man never learned how to honor his father and mother, how on earth he's going to honor his wife? So our daughters, when they see that man, the way he treats his parents, as my wife said earlier in the lessons, that's how he's supposed to treat you. And if he can't treat them right, he's not going to do 1 Peter 3, and you're going to run into a danger. Hairs together, save. New Jerusalem, glory, crowns. And if he does not adhere to this verse, we just looked at the we just looked at the woman's side. The word of God not be blasphemed. Now he, the husband, prayers be not hindered. You know, as a family or together, you got prayers. You're praying to God, and you say, "Oh, why are these prayers being answered?" It may be because of him. He may not be treating his wife right. And God said, hey, can't answer that. You're not doing what I told you to do as a husband. And we already looked at Titus 2, 5, where the word of God be not blasphemed. 1 Corinthians 7, 5, remember we talked about you two have decided together you're going to restrict sexual activity as a husband and wife together. Now look at 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Let's see this as we've already studied it. There are warnings in a marriage. And this one, hey, you want to do something together. You want to fast. You want to food, drink, and sex. 
Honey, there's something serious or somebody in church is really... Let's not come together. We saw this in Exodus. 7.5 Defraud not ye the other, except to be for a consent of time, set a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer. Come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinent. When you withhold sex from a husband or for a wife, Satan has now come into the room and he will tempt you with thoughts and ideas in Matthew 5.23. A poor marriage is a poor testimony of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. The wives of the Bible... 396 times wife as a plural 11 wives 132 times wife plural one time husband 120 times there's more wives than there are husbands husbands 19 times there's more wives than there are husbands in the Bible Husbands plural six. There are more wives plural than there are husbands plural. How about that one? And you thought that the Bible was male chauvinistic Bible. There's more wives than there are. And we'll just go through these. I'll leave you to look up the scriptures. Genesis 2:24. The husband is the cleave and not cleaver his wife. Spoken by the first husband. Genesis 2.25, there is no shame in a husband and wife being naked. Genesis 24.5, there was no outside the kindred marriage. They were saved and saved. Exodus 19.15, there is a fast of sexual relations, which we just, we just talked about. You can say, we're going to refrain ourselves. That's allowed. If both husband and wife agree. Deuteronomy 24 verses 1 through 4. The second marriage is more honorable than the first. That says if, if, if the wife departs from her husband, she gets married to another man, and he tells her to leave, she cannot go back to the first husband. It was abominable. 24 5. One year leave to comfort his wife. Why? She's She's, she's left her family, she's left her home, her friends, to a brand new life. you got to get accustomed to each other. And the law said a year-long honeymoon. He didn't have to go to the military service if there was a battle. He was allowed a family leave act for getting married one year. In the Bible. He's to stay with her. He's to cheer her up. He's to help her. Oh, honey, I want these curtains. All right, let me get the hammer. Get that house all going. Being with his wife. So she can see how much of a slob he is. <laughs> Job 2.9. This is a wife that's after Satan and not God. She is bitter. She's buried her children, but in her husband's distress, she can just curse God and die. That's the wrong attitude. Psalms 128, verse 3, she's likened to a fruitful vine, life, beauty, a berry, a juice from a berry. And even when the berry shrivels up, you still got a raisin. Even in wrinkles. I don't think I said that right, but Proverbs 5:18, you're gonna rejoice with and not be angry. Proverbs 18:22. There is the good again. A wife is good according to the Bible. Proverbs 19.13 Angry and moody wife is like a drip that just will not stop. And knowing it causes damage slowly. A prudent wife is of the Lord. Proverbs 19.14 So that prudence that we, we learned in Titus, that has to come from the Lord. That has to come from godly women. That has to come by prayer. That just does not come with the equipment. That's got to be taught. Who's going to teach? 
Ecclesiastes 9 9 joyful with in a vanity life this life is vanity but it's written to Christians in the Bible be joyful with your wife Matthew 18 25 death of a husband can be charged to the wife better be careful that when, when that husband dies how much are you gonna leave her debt Matthew 19 9 and 10 the disciples question marriage after what Jesus said it's lifelong Matthew 19 10 12 marriage is not for all men and we talked about that with 1st Corinthians 7 God has for some men and for some women I don't want you to marry I want you to give you all to me Matthew 22 30 there is no marriage in heaven First Peter 3, 1 through 7, the character of a wife and obedience and the respect. The respect. And then we get the modern marriage. Television and movies. The husband and wife in film. They are not married. Nine out of ten kids. So when that man and women are on the screen, well, we're it's not even their real names. They're living a lie right in front of your eyes. And they're committing adultery, Matthew 5, 28. Hollywood's a lie. Skits are a lie. Because you're not that person's name. You're not that person's occupation. You're not really married. Thinking of sex and not having sex, talking and not doing, the Bible says that's adultery. Nakedness, partial or full nudity. Nakedness is nakedness and it's a sin we discussed. Are they married? No, it's adultery. Is it a parent? No, it's adultery. Is it a licensed practitioner? No, it's adultery. We've already discussed the nakedness. A doctor can see your nakedness. Is that a doctor? No. If he calls himself a doctor, he's not a doctor, that's a lie. That violated her nakedness. Well, I, I'm in the movie, and I go see the doctor, and I get, I get unclothed. That's adultery. That's no. It's a sin. I love you. Does Lucy really love me? We never met. Lies and lies and sin. These songs you hear on the radio, I love you, I love me. No, you don't. You don't know who I am. I love you is said and read of a script with no meaning. There is not God is love in those scripts. It's a lie from the liar, John 8, 44. Those people on the screen, oh, I love you. They may hate each other's guts when the camera's off. That's a lie. And they said, I've seen all these wild things on, on YouTube. These two, they really hated each other. Man, during the film of this movie, man, it, it, it's lucky that they finished the movie without killing each other. And then you can say, I love you. Imagine a poor woman. She's married to a guy who's an actor. Oh, I just love you, baby. I just, yeah, okay. And then he goes off to work and says, I love you to three or four women uh, going into a pretend bed. And that's really going to make your wife feel really stable. That's why they have breakdown marriages and adultery and marriage after marriage after marriage. Who do you really love? And you got churches doing this stuff. But we're doing it for Jesus. We're doing it for God. Lying? Oh, we don't talk about sex or anything like that. We just have the kids call themselves lying. Well, we're really this. No, lying. And then you go preach about television and all that, and you do it right in your church house. A lie is a lie. 25 minutes or two hours, all problems are solved at the end. I grew up with the Brady Bunch. Every single problem at the end of the Brady Bunch, everything was solved. Peter one day had to wash his suit, put too much laundry detergent in it, overfill it, bubbles all over the plate, which doesn't really happen. Um, but, you know, at the end of the episode, Alice came in, cleaned the whole thing up, fixed the laundry, and everything was made hunk-a-dory. 
Uh, Greg took the car one day and smashed up the car, but by the end of the episode, the car is fixed. There's no bills, no nothing like that. And then you find out the guy's a sodomite. Oh! It's a lie. It's a lie. Problems will continue in your life. They don't end in 30 minutes. They don't end in two hours. They may, some may, many will not. It leaves a false impression on wives and husbands. It leaves a false impression from the future, present, and past. It's not a good example for our young women. But from the example that our young women are supposed to be getting from the aged women, it's not happening either. 